Kinsel School uh, Skills Centre. So we have a sixth form centre as well that runs an awful lot of courses. So please do look at our website to have a look at that as well. Um, but in particular today, I'm talking about our Great Skills Centre, um, which runs at the moment just a construction course. We used to offer mechanics as well, but now we specialise in construction. So it goes quite nicely with the previous video that you've just had a look at. It was initially opened in 2010 to give us a little bit of an opportunity to offer vocational skills as well for those students who didn't necessarily want to just be doing the core subjects. Uh, and it was originally offered just a key stage four, but fortunately, because it grew in popularity and we were doing so well with it, we are now starting to offer some of those higher level courses as well. Eventually, obviously, we're offering some of our higher level um, qualifications to post 16. And the one that I'll be talking to you today about is construction in particular. Uh, and again, I've got some nice information that I'll be able to give you, but clearly I won't be able to give you extra information about yet, which is why I've put at the bottom of each of the slides, should you need to, please do get in touch with Mr Northall, who is very happy to reply to any questions that you might have as well. Um, as far as the actual courses that we offer, we've got a level two course really in three key trades. So we've got carpentry and joinery, trowel operations, which is essentially brick work and plastering and then there's multi skills as well now i did find out what multi skills actually meant and again mr northall helped me out with this one and basically said it's it's kind of like a taster of some of the other ones as well so there's two units on brickwork two units of carpentry two units of painting and decorating uh, and it means that you can sort of do that perhaps before you go on to level two in and decide to specialize in say carpentry or in brickwork uh, and it sounds like it's a really popular thing for people to be doing all of the level two courses are one year long uh, and they're accessible as it says here three days a week so it's monday tuesday and thursday that it runs I will put a caveat in that as well, that if you haven't passed your core subjects, so that's maths and English, then you will have to make sure that you are doing some work on that in order to, to resit. Uh, being an English teacher, I've actually taught some of those, those resit lessons. We normally have a group of maybe seven or eight students. They get two hours a week for the subject that they, they haven't managed to get a, level, a grade four for. Um, and it's specialized teaching to try and hopefully get you through your resit either in November Sometimes we've had to have students that are resitting in the summer as well. There are occasions where we do functional skills instead, but usually it's with an eye to actually progress on to getting your GCSE level for grade four, I keep on saying level, grade four uh, for, for maths or English, whatever it might be. Um, usually there's around about 15 hours a week of teaching time, but again, that could include the two hours of the, the resits that you might be doing as well. There are slightly more academic courses, Mr Northall says as well. So if you're thinking of one that you want to go on to more office based construction professional roles, there are level three courses that kind of suit you to look towards becoming managers, surveyors. Um, and they're really the students who have already achieved their grade fours at, at English, maths and science and above, because as Sir says here, it is actually quite demanding what you're being asked to do. So so hopefully it kind of suits students who kind of want to push on a little bit more for those specific areas. But the actual practical stuff, you can also get some, some really great results for as well. So as far as what you can kind of expect from the construction centre, I have to say the actual place where they where they do all their teaching is is discreet from the rest of the school. So they have their own area um, and it's a really nice little little place as well. It's got their own classrooms. It's got their own uh, own specific places where they can practice brickwork um, and, and do lots of other stuff as well. And as Sarah's put here, it's a really nice, calm environment because it is designed for you specifically. There's a real sense of ownership there as well from the students who, who very much enjoy being over there and being a part of it as well. And of course, you're going to be learning lots and lots of different skills and lots and lots of different topics as well. Um, so you'll cover things like health and safety. I heard just previously then Sarah talking about that when she was speaking about some of the roles in her company. Sustainability in the built environment, science and materials, and actually lots and lots of different practical tasks. So when I was speaking to Mr Northall about it and asking about the, the different kind of balance, I suppose, of what you have to do, he says that in level two, really, you're probably going to be doing about 50 percent practical and 50 percent theory. So there's a, a really good balance there. And he wants to make sure that there is that clear balance. When you move on to level three, it sounds like actually the practical moves up. So he thinks it's around about 70-30 split with 30 
30 percent being being the, the theory side of it as well so again the whole point of these courses and the whole point of them being vocational is to get you set up for the next step and to make sure that you've got a skill that will progress further so as far as progression route goes and i do know how hard mr northall works on this to really make sure that the students feel supported in not just being able to do the job but actually being able to apply for things so he helps you with completing your cv there's an awful lot of help and support also for applying for jobs, as well as all of the contacts that they already have over there. And where we can, because it is part of the sick form. And by the way, I should have said at the, at the beginning, the reason that I'm speaking is because I'm the head of year 12. And whilst um, on the most part, I don't really have a huge amount of dealings with the people over in the skills centre. Um, things like careers advice and appointments as well, we do actually support you with should you need it. Although I have to say, Mr Northall is brilliantly a pro brilliant at providing that support. So after year 12, if you want to, once you've completed that, those level two courses, there is the opportunity to stay on for another year on another level three course, as I said a moment ago. What's really fantastic, as you can see here, is that 90 percent of our students who come onto our course leave with employment or as an apprentice. And as I say, the work that goes into that from Mr. Northall and the contacts that he's got are absolutely brilliant. Uh, for example, we've had students that have gone over to work for Bridge North Homes. Lots of local business, uh, sorry, building companies are, are there to kind of support us as well. Um, and we've had lots of students going on to apprenticeships with big companies like Taylor Wimpy, Bovis and all sorts like that as well. So if you're thinking that this is uh, something that you're really, really interested in, then... As I said right at the start, um, the Q&A with me would probably not help you too much, but sending an email or actually having a little bit of a visit and a look at our skills centre website would be a really good place to start. Uh, in the next few days, we're, we're putting up actually lots and lots of video and lots of course guides as well for the rest of the of IDS or SIT form for all of our A-level courses and BTECs as well. So if you just keep on visiting the website, it is being uh, updated all the time. And so um, hopefully all the questions that you might have at the end of this that I won't be able to actually tell you anything too much about will, fingers crossed, be something that they can uh, can help you with.